Hello and welcome to my latest policy review where I have a look at the For Britain Manifesto of 2020, best manifesto in the country. Now, like so many of our policies, I feel really, really strongly about this one. Uh, it's, it's something that touches me quite emotionally, um, the, this issue generally. Uh, and as uh, it's a very short policy, very simple policy proposal, uh, but a very powerful and very important one. And I'm talking about pensions. And the reason this hits me and the reason that it's, it's, I feel really strongly about it is because I feel really strongly that after working for 50 years of our lives, for, you know, after contributing for all those years to our society, to be thrown on the scrap heap at the end of that and left with very little, to me is beyond morally reprehensible. It, it's, it's akin to, in fact, when our military put their lives and limbs on the line for this country, go off, see terrible things, have terrible things happen to them, and then they come back and they are thrown on the scrap heap with nothing. Uh, it's, again, morally reprehensible. And we cannot and should not tolerate it under any circumstances. We can give £14 billion a year to countries on the other side of the world while our own pensioners and veterans are, are choosing between heating and eating or sleeping on the street. Absolutely unacceptable and intolerable. I feel so strongly about that. So, as with the others, I will read this is very, very short. I will read from the manifesto uh, and uh, say a few words. So, first of all, to start, For Britain understands that our country's pensioners are the people who have built and maintained our country and that they deserve, deserve a retirement that is comfortable, dignified and reflective of their contribution to the nation's wealth and status. You know, we still have elderly people in this country who remember World War II uh, and who have lived through extraordinary change, often extraordinary hardships and the likes of which my generation doesn't actually understand. Um, the respect we ought to give to our elderly people is increasingly missing from our society and it must, must be brought back uh, to to allow as i said at the start to allow our pe our elderly people our pensioners to live in hunger uh is is utterly utterly disgraceful uh and and you know part of the reason it's so utterly disgraceful is the lack of respect and it's a you know when when our our, our state pension is a lot lower than other countries in europe for example what message does that send to society in general, that we are our pensioners, millions of our pensioners are in extreme difficulty, but we're not helping them. Instead, we're sending billions overseas. What message does that send to our society in general about respect for the elderly? Not a great one, I would suggest. It also doesn't send a great message of respect for ourselves as a country. We are deeply concerned about changes to pension provision for women. The state pension age for women used to be 60 but has risen in recent years uh, and is to be raised to 66 by 2020 and 67 by 2028. Uh, many women argue that they were not given sufficient, no sufficient notice of these changes to their pension plans and as such are asking for transitional arrangements to be made. Campaigners challenged the government in court uh, but lost the challenge. Now some of this is somewhat previous uh, if you like as we're already in 2020 and these changes were to to take place in 2020 however what they do show what this episode does show is uh, how quickly the government can make changes and make us work longer now i agree entirely that men and women's retirement age should be equal uh, but there were great complaints from, from women, for example, that they weren't given enough notice to make financial arrangements 
uh, given how quickly their pen, their uh, uh, the age they would have to work to, uh, and the age they would get their pension at changed, and they weren't given sufficient time to make financial arrangements. Um, so a bit of a mess, uh, and and. Uh, uh, Sadly, often unsurprising from governments that they make messes out of things like this. And it says something, doesn't it, that, you know, you, you don't expect this kind of shambolic uh, transformation of people's lives and transformation of people's pensions and transformation of people's ability to put food on their table. Uh and let, you know, a government who makes those kinds of changes, it doesn't tell me that they really take into account the needs uh, and the entitlements and the respect. The respect is, is, is really what it's all about. There wasn't consideration given uh, to the financial arrangements that women would have to, to make. But more significant in this section is the rise to 67 uh, people will have to work until 67 by 2028. So the age we have to work just keeps going up, as it does in other European countries. Um, what's extraordinary is that while this happens, refugees keep coming. Asylum seekers keep coming. And they keep coming to European countries. We're, we're, you know, we're not alone here. And even the Conservatives have said that they will open up the door to more and more asylum seekers and refugees, uh, which would be bad enough if not for the fact that most of them aren't even actually asylum seekers or refugees, many who are coming here, and who are being prioritised over and above British people. Now, I don't believe it's a coincidence that we are being asked to work for longer, uh, whilst we seem to think we have some duty to feed the whole world at our own elderly people's expense. I think it's scandalous. And how much, how, how, how long is this going to go on for? How much money are they going to drain out of Britain's pocket to pay for the rest of the world? How much longer are they going to expect us to work to pay for the rest of the world? Because that's what this is about. It is always the native Brit who has to pay the bills while everyone else with the whole world is looked after and even prioritised over the Brits. Just as a starting point, 14 billion in foreign aid. Scandalous. Utterly, utterly scandalous. For Britain seeks major state reform that is fair to both men and women and which provides for a higher standard of living in line with pension rates in other European countries. Now, there, every European country has its own way of doing this. Uh, there are various, and, and, and pension, as you can imagine, state pension, private pension, the combination of the two, complex, and different countries have their own way of doing this. However, when it comes to take home, when it comes to money in the pocket, Germany, France, Spain are all considerably higher uh, than we are. Now, we need to know why. Why is it that British pensioners are so much poorer than French or Spanish pensioners. We want to know this and we want to figure, we want to do what they're doing. We want our pensioners better looked after. That means we can stop wasting money for a start so we can have the money to fund better lifestyles for our elderly people. So for Britain will, just four points here. Equalise the retirement age for men and women at 63. We should not be working until 67. It's frankly scandalous uh, and it's only happening because the taxpayer is being more and more burdened in order to pay for woke political projects. No. Raise state pensions in line with other European countries, yes. And yes, we can afford it too. If we didn't waste so much, the NHS wastes £7 billion a year and as I will say for, I think, the third, fourth time in this video, 14 billion is going overseas. Yes, we can afford to pay better pensions. It's just that the elderly are not a priority. That's actually, that's the harsh truth. Prevent means testing of pensions unless the combined amount of state plus private is above 30,000. Now, there is discussion and has been for some time about means testing the state pension. Uh, that in itself will add another massive layer of bureaucracy. 
uh, and I don't believe it should happen uh, in in most cases, certainly in the poorest people's cases. Above 30,000 is an idea that's been floated uh, and I think it's it's probably a decent compromise. Reevaluate tax bans for retirees and this is part of, of what we need to do I think to get us into a similar level of, of to, to Germany and France for example because um, at the moment 25% of your of uh, your uh, pension is tax free. 75% is taxed. And there are various different ways it can be taxed, but that needs re-evaluation. That's all we're asking for is for us to re-evaluate this because two major points, and I'll end on these two major points. One, we are lagging far behind our counterparts in other European countries. Why and what can we do to fix it? And two, these are our British people. These are the people who built this country and the people before them and the people before them. For Britain stands for honouring those who went before us in the name of those who are yet to come. This is key. It is a mark of who we are. It also is a mark of who we are when our elderly people are starving or sitting in the freezing cold. It's on acceptable. It should touch us all. It should shame this country's government after government who have allowed hundreds of thousands of our pensioners to face a choice between heating and eating. It shall not, shall not, shall not continue. And our, our, our starting point, our starting point has to be a revive, a revival of the respect that is due to our elderly people, the people who have built this country. Let's reward them, let's show our gratitude with a much higher standard of living, certainly in line with the rest of Europe. I think that's the least we can do.